Parashas Truma. We're going to speak about the mitzvah of Sadaka from the Beis HaLevi. It's actually five small pieces, four small pieces, one medium size, all about the Indian of Sadaka. Um, and we'll, we'll see that they're all uh, different facets of this mitzvah that uh, come out from this week's parsha, from Drashas and the Psukim in this week's parsha. And uh, very interesting points. So the benefit of having it in small snippets is that you could, you know, just pick out one. It's really independent thoughts, all different <laughs> facets of tzedakah. We're going to begin uh, from left to right today. That's just the way the photocopying works. Starting from the paragraph, the little paragraph that says, Dabriel B'nai Yisrael. This is a famous piece. It's a, it's a classic. Maybe other Mepharshim say this as well. Parshas Truma comes after Parshas Mishpatim. Mm-hmm. And what's the connection between Parshas Mishpatim with all the laws of damages and the laws of theft and so on, and then the laws of, uh, of giving towards the Mishkan, Truma. So says the Beis HaLevi, Dabra Ben Esav Yikuli Truma Meis Kal Isha Shei Yidvenu Libay Tichu Es Trumasi. Speak to the Ben Yisrael and take from me the Truma from anyone who wants to give his heart, desires to give, take from him this uh, Truma, this donation that he's giving to the Mishkan. Hinei Ba Parshas Uachrei Parshas Mishpatim the Betchila Kaidim Sheyasa Adam Tzedaka B'Mamaynoi Tzarech Lirois before a person gives tzedakah with his money, he must ascertain that his money is really his. And it's no chashash, no uh, question of theft. If it's not really his, then there's no merit for, from him giving the tzedakah. Just like a person who takes a lulav that doesn't belong to him, that's stolen, that is invalidated, there's no mitzvah, because it's coming through an Avera. He stole the lulav and shook it, so he doesn't get a mitzvah. Same thing with money that's not really his. There's chashash geza on it, and he gives tzedakah. The Pasuk in Yeshaya says, so that means <coughs> mishpat, justice, uh, steps backwards, is pushed backwards. mishpat, and tzedaka stands far away. So the meaning is that after mishpat, after justice, is distanced. So then there is no merit of tzedaka. Person says, uh, Hashem will forgive me, you know. Uh, I'll, uh, it's true that it wasn't such an honest business deal, but Hashem will, will, uh, will forgive me for this one because I'm using some of the money to give for tzedakah. Well, it doesn't work that way. Okay? A person, if, he, if it's not his money, if there's a question of Gezel in it, so then, that's the first thing he has to deal with. He first has to make sure that it's honest. Then, he could have the merit of tzedakah when he gives some of the money for tzedakah. This is a famous pasuk because we learn it by uh, Tanis Tzibor, by Mincha, uh, also in pasuk in Yeshaya, Perak Nunvav. Shimru Mishpat. Guard Mishpat, justice. Ma'asu tzedakah, ki kreva yeshuasi lavai. So meaning to say, first guard the mishpat and then do tzedakah. So that's the look, that's the parashas here. First we have parashas mishpatim, and then Hashem says, once you know how to determine what uh, is the monetary laws of what's yours, what's not yours, <coughs> now we can go to the next step. Okay, the money's really yours. Now you could get you ready to give towards the Mishkan's Parshas Truma. Okay. Um, not, it's easier said than done, right? It's easier to give a little bit of money to tzedakah than to ascertain that everything is really, really belongs to you. 
and uh, everything that was done was done uh, with all honesty. Are we going to get into whether or not the person receiving the daka is worthy of getting it? Or In one part of it, we're going to speak about a little bit about that, but we're going to be focusing mainly on the givers today. Okay. Hopefully, we uh, we want to fall into that category. We pray that Hashem should always make us in the category of the givers, and that's what we're learning about today. <coughs> Okay. Um, okay. Now we're going to go to the next column. So now we know what to give, right? Give money that's only 100% ours, and that's the first step. First Shimu Mishpat, and then Vasu Tzedakah. And we go to another idea here. Uh, a very interesting Gemara in Baba Basra speaks about a uh, contradiction and it resolves it that there's a difference between Goyim and Yidin, between Jews and Gentiles, in regard to the mitzvah of tzedakah. Again, we're talking about the givers and when it's considered a merit for the one who's giving. Okay, we begin with the Zohar. Yine v'zohar ha-kadosh mefarish. The ha-dam ra-kosov me'ez kolish ha-shed yiven u-libay tiklo es trumasi. Koyal erev rav. Now, there's a, the, the Pasuk says, from anyone who desires to give, take my chuma. So says the Zohar, who is this coming to include? Kol is a reboy. Anyone who wants to give, you could accept from. So not only the uh, upstanding uh, uh, Jews, but even the Erev Rav. The Erev Rav who wore such maminim and a Kodesh Baruch Hu, literally translated it there, uh, mixed in of some evil into the Jewish nation. They came out together with the Jewish people as um, as Gerim, but not such righteous Gerim, the Egyptians came along with them, and even from them you can take. Gamehem yuchlu likach. And that's why the Pasuk say, Meis kol libat. Now, <coughs> what we're going to uh, get into, and the Arachayim speaks about this in this week's Parsha, is that there's some extra words in the Pasuk, it seems like, because the Pasuk says, Ta'abra b'nei Yisrael speaks of b'nei Yisrael, v'yichlu li chuma. And then it says, So, in the beginning of the Pasuk it says, So it speaks to B'nai Yisrael. And then, in the end of the Pasuk it says, So what is this, first Dabra B'nai Yisrael, and take my Chuma, making no condition, just take the Chuma, and then, in the second half of the Pasuk, it seems like somewhat conditional. If a person has nidva salev, asha yidvanu libay, so then, tikla es chumasi, then you could take my chuma. Okay, I'm already giving away the way slave is going to tell us. Yeah, you want to say that the B'nai Yisrael have to give it, the other people, only if, only if the desire comes upon them. You know, so because of the desire of Rav. Ah, what you're saying that's from the red, it would sound like perhaps from the beginning of the Pasuk that you should take it mandatory. Yeah. Take it. Right. Okay, we're going to see, every, and although everyone did give, but there were different chumas. There were a couple that were mandatory for the for the uh, HaShekel, right, and for the Adonim, but um, for most, the most part, the chuma that's being, and there's a drasha that says, says the word chuma three times, so there definitely is room to say what you're, what you're saying, that the first chuma is referring to something that's mandatory. Okay, he's going to go with a different shot, basically the, um, that's following that the, the most obvious chuma that we're discussing here in the psukim is all of the ingredients that were to, for the actual building of the mishkan. Not just the machas of shekel. And this was all brought willingly as an adaba, whoever wanted to well, contribute. Only because, only because the, the wording, in other words, if the Kodesh Baruch said if it, was, if it wouldn't be mandatory, I don't think the word should be vehicle and take from me. I think we should be the devil of Israel, particularly that it should give to me. It should give. Okay, but we say we say take, that's, that's, that's much, much more forceful. Take sounds like you're collecting it from them. Right, not more forceful than that, that to give me. Not just receiving. Right. As we spoke about previously, that Yikhu is not just receiving. Right. When it came to the Torah, I think it was, what was it, two weeks ago? Last week, that Yikach's. Sometimes you have to take the Torah through 
through uh, your efforts and through meriting it. Okay. Um, we're going to speak more about this lesson of Yikru. This is a, a subject of many drashas as well. Of Yikru Li Chuma. Okay. I'm going to continue. The basal lady brings the Gemara in Baba Basra. Love in Hemshech HaKasuv. The Musech is Baba Basra. Maskanas HaGemara. The Misha Inu Mamin Bashem. Scharv HaInesh. Somebody who is not a non-believer. Does not believe in Hashem. Does not believe in reward and punishment. HaChez HaChaita. The kindness that he does. L'Pamim Chat HaSulay. You can actually count as something that's not a, not a merit. On the contrary. It's considered a chatas. It's considered as a sin for him. Shaina is his god Because he's moving in the wrong direction. He's not doing it altruistically. He's doing it to uh, to further his own greatness and his own name and looking for himself to be misfire and misgadel and actually he's doing it uh, to to uh, instead of to follow in the ways of Hashem and to uh, somehow through a, a, a merit through a Maisa Mitzvah and a Muna and kindness instead he's really looking for fame and greatness and everyone should praise him and should look good so he's giving he's giving and this is considered a chatos for such a person that is not a Maimon Sheina Oisa al Hizgadav al Hizgadav al Mitzvah Ki Eino Imamin Bizkar Ba'inesh so he's not doing it for a Mitzvah that is by one person by a not a believer of Yisrael Amamin, but by a Jewish person who believes in a Gadish Baruch Hu. Gam imein mechavin ba nesina l'shma, rak kavanos le kadesh b'schus nesina yagil le tayva. He mitz a gemura, the karele ha gemara tzadik gemur. We have a yid. He's a mamin ba Gadish Baruch Hu. He's a believer, and he gives the tzedaka for not for altruistic reasons, not l'shma. Not for the sake of the mitzvah, but he's giving it because he wants to have a segula, he wants to have a schos. He wants that Hashem should look after his son who is ailing, God forbid. And he's saying, I'm giving this tzedakah so that my son should have a refuah shalema. That's called tzadik gomer. He's called righteous. That's a righteous deed. But it's also, uh, uh, obviously, the comparison isn't the same, but the, by, by, by the mere fact that he's asking for something in return, can, 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 can we not say it's also not totally altruistic? In other words, yes, he's giving it, but he wants to go to work to heal, to heal his son. So, what, in other words, there, what is the big difference from a person who says, I'm, I want it for the COVID, that's what he wants it for, but I, I'm giving it because. I want the Kurdish Baruch to heal. Okay, so there's a very, it's a very fine line. Is you saying that it is the si- similar or not? I'm saying it is similar. Okay, so that's what we have to see. That what, the way the um, Gemara is going to explain to us is that it depends who's the giver. So really, when a person is giving for something that he wants, uh, some non-altruistic reason, but it depends who's the giver. And what we'll see, he's going to bring... Differences is Exactly. It depends. The Gemara says <coughs> the the the, the, the is explaining what the difference is whether he has a Muna, but the um, the Gemara says um, <coughs> if we ask this contradiction that we see a pasuk, the pasuk said to um, doing it just to uh, to be misgadel to make themselves great brings a pasuk okay so the point is then the Gemara brings a brisa that a person gives a sela a coin of tzedakah and he says sela zel tzedakah so he's not doing it lishma. Hariz at tzadik gomer. So the gemara answers like Asher can be Yisrael can by the kechadim. This is by a Jew, and this is by a Yisrael, and this is by another kechadim. Somebody you could translate it a Gentile. You could translate it somebody who is an idol worshipper, doesn't believe in Hashem. Right. But a person can have ulterior motives for giving tzedakah, which might be valid, legitimate, laudable 
yeah, go ahead. ulterior motives, and on the other hand, he can have ul ulterior motives which are purely base, which are not different types more. of other motives. The one guy who's just doing it for self-aggrandizement, yes. Lehiskadel, and the other guy who's doing it says, "I'm a hundred percent. I believe in Hashem. I'm giving this tzedakah, the ilu nishmas uh, imi marasi, or whatever it right. is, or uh, for a poor shalem for my son." I mean, that's a guy who believes in Hashem, and he's giving tzedakah for a legitimate purpose. Okay, but is it tzedakah, or is it a maisa of helping his mother go up uh, to higher levels of... In other words, but, it but is I a good would, thing that I he wants his mother, or he wants his son to live, and he wants, uh, he wants these chusim, those are good. But is it a maisa of tzedakah? Um, in terms of the... It could, well, let's ask it this way. Could you call it uh, Gomer, that this mitzvah is a mitzvah that is a one that it, not that it's the highest level we don't mean to say that it's the highest level of tzedakah but where is this uh, nikuda, this point that he wants to give tzedakah for the mitzvah of tzedakah but the um, of that mitzvah to go for the revolution of Lama for his son the Lord goes he's giving tzedakah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very similar to what the Gemara answers, but it, uh, we'll, we'll see in a second. This, what you're saying, is, a, is another answer. And it's, you're saying that I don't think it's exactly. First, let's see what the Gemara says. Then we'll contrast the two. It could be they're both right. The Gemara says that I mean, the way Rashi explains the Gemara, and uh, okay, it could be there's room for more than one shot. Rashi says Yisrael died on the Ben yichya, ben la yichya. Whether the whether he actually gets what he wants, whether the child actually lives or God forbid doesn't live, He's not going to question the Hashem's ways, and he's not going to say, oh, "I wish I didn't give this tzedakah in the first place." He's only giving it because he wants this result. If he doesn't get it, then he has regret that he actually gave. So in other words, when a person, when a yid gives, if somebody has a muna, gives, it's true that he wants that there's merit, something should come out, something in Olam Haza that he, should en he could enjoy and he could see pay rise from this Maitza Tzedakah. He wants that. But those are just the pay rise that he wants. Those are the fruits that he wants. But if he, if he doesn't get it, he's not going to be miscarried. He wants to do a Maitza Tzedakah. Otherwise, he would rather be around. Because you're both with you as my son, and then I will get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. It's, it's, yes. It's, 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 it's the same idea, but it's, a, it's, it's just a twist on it. So he's not doing it as a tznai. Right. Like he's not right. saying it's right. not a conditional this tzedakah. But, uh, but somebody who doesn't have emuna and he's doing it for some uh, other reason, so he's really only doing it for that reason, not for the mitzvah. Okay. But, why do, but why do you automatically assume? That, that a non Yisrael wouldn't have the same. In other words, if a non Yisrael has a child who's also sick, why would not we believe that he himself also wants exactly the same thing? Right. Right, that's a good question. Uh, I'm on video right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, pause it if you wish. But they, they, could, uh, they could nix this <coughs> if they want, so it's at their own risk. But um, the idea here is that a yid, uh, at the core, at his essence, is is um, as a moon Hakadosh Baruch Hu and wants to do what's right, and everything <coughs> that is um, that is surrounding that is really just a shell. It's really not what's at the the core of the food. Mm -hmm. So when that when something uh, when a when a year it has something that's um, not the highest levels of a, of a kavana, so you say that's not really what's at the essence of this deed, of this action. Really what's at the essence is his emunah and HaKadosh Baruch And what he really wants is that he wants to do a, a righteous deed. So, and, and by a Gentile that's also possible, but it's not taken for granted that that's the case uh, when, that, when we have that. Okay, now if we look inside the Beis HaLevi, and the Beis HaLevi says, um, brings the Rashi. Um, okay, if you see where he brings, um, 
the rest of the next paragraph. Ah, okay. So let's go back. So let's. You see where there's a line after like five lines. So he says. Um, that's by um, somebody who's not a mammon. Kin a mammon was harvainish. We swell a mammon, but by a yid, Gamam ain't a machavin by Nasina Lishma, Rak of Anasa Kadesh of Eschus and Nasina Yegiyaloi, Taiva. Something good should come to him in, in this world. He mitzvah gemura, the Karlia Gemara Tzadi Gamur. Okay? Now he didn't explain why yet. When somebody is not a maimim, somebody who will call him, the Gemara calls it an akum, he only can be considered a merit if he really means it with a kavana taiva. He's giving it for a good reason, then it's a merit for him. If there is some giving, there's some... The reason why he's giving it is because he's turning towards himself and thinking about himself. So that's considered, that's not considered a merit for him. So now, let's go back to our Pasuk in Parshas Truma. And there's two types of givers. When it comes to B'nai Yisrael, there's no, it's unconditional. Anyone who wants could give. If it's a Yisrael, so then Yikuli Chuma. But there's another category that the Zayar calls the Erebrav. From anyone, even from the Erebrav, they're not Mamine. Then take it when he has a good Kavana. So then take the Chuma even from somebody who's an Erebrav. Then you should take it. But if he has in mind for himself, that won't be a Maisa Tzedakah. So, depends who you were taking it from. And I don't know if they had Ruach HaKadosh or how did they know if the guy said that what he's giving it for, then you would know not to take it from him if he's from the Erev Rav. But from the rest of yourself, whoever wants to give, you could... You I've never heard the moist face, any moist face, turn, <laughs> t- turning down donations well, uh, because the person's giving you with the wrong uh, cover. Back the old fact is, I think the, the, the way human nature is, once a person decides to give, okay, that's really a really good sign. Because people, you know, do not give easily. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't say that. Some people give more easily than others, but I think once you decide to give, that's already... Uh, okay. Uh, here, here. The, what you say about the moist life, I, there's a very beautiful Maisa, I can't remember the Maisa, so I'll have to tell it over to you later, but about the, uh, uh, um, the, um, there's a, a Hasidic Rebbe that survived the war and uh, built up many, many moist uh, the Klausenberger Rebbe. And there's a mice with the Kleisenberger Rebbe when he first came to America. How he um, and there's a, there's a, there are there, there are certain there are mice, but the point is that they're far they're far and few between. Right? They're they're few and far between of these mice when tzedakah was recognized as being something that really wasn't being given, uh, wasn't going to be beneficial to receive it, and wasn't received. We had, we had a situation here a little over a year ago where someone was making uh, contributions to an organization on a regular basis and then uh, they found out that the sources of his income was basically from so the pardon yeah. you know that's who a different story. that's a different so they had to stop accepting uh-huh. <laughs> Why is this? So we already read the Rashi, we'll read it again. What's the reason for the difference between these two types of people? Somebody who doesn't have a if he doesn't get what he wants, if Hashem doesn't give him what he was, what he was seeking, so who is it? Hashem came to Israel, a Maimon, but by a Yid, a Maimon by Hashem, Mashgacha. And he believes that everything that Kodesh Baruch Hu does is with a reason and planned. 
That's the reason for Rashi. Okay, so then he believes, he doesn't question the ways of Hashem, even if he doesn't get what he was, what he was praying for. Another pshat says basically, Yisrael HaMaim in Hashem. Hashem wants that those who, who have emuna, those ma'aminim, that they should live. So when he wants, okay, maybe this is your pshat, when he wants that his son should live, that's something that Hashem wants as well. So this non-altruistic reason, so to speak, that... It's what, not a contradiction. It, it's not a kind. In other words, it's not the main. But we, I can't. We can't call, I guess we can't call it tzedakah lishma. But it is also a good thing that he wants that uh, that he wants to come out of this. And we come zev rata in Hashem she yichyu ma aminav the yilhem kol tov the nimtza to kavanasa yugam kein mitzvah. So that also is a mitzvah that the success of those. Uh, righteous people and the maminim should should uh, come about. That is what Hashem wants. Mm-hmm. Says in the Mishnah of us, schar mitzvah. The reward of a mitzvah is a mitzvah. So, I guess literally translated, you understand that means that Hashem sent a person as another mitzvah. When he does one mitzvah. He gets the opportunity to do another mitzvah. Another mitzvah. But you could also read it the opposite way around. That the reward that you get for a mitzvah, that itself is a mitzvah. Because Hashem wants that a righteous person should be rewarded. So that's why He gave you the mitzvahs in the first place. Because He wants the reward to come to the righteous people. So by you doing the mitzvah and bringing upon a reward to a uh, so righteous person, so you're at, that, that, that itself is being the kind of the Ratzai of Hashem. Taskar she'am aminim mikablim avor mitzvah, the reward that those uh, who are ma'aminim, who have emuna, uh, receive for the mitzvah, who gam kein mitzvah, shegein hu ratzani is barach, because that's really what Hashem's desire is. Lehitiv ma'aminim to bestow goodness, Upon the righteous, nimsa harei kavanah say gam kein le mitzvah. So it's ka- that itself is a kavanah for a mitzvah as well. The yigavol schar avu aschar, and he'll get a reward for the reward. Yachin lo elam b'leig vuf. Amazing. Okay, every mitzvah then has a chain reaction, more and reward, and then for that reward more reward. Mashen kein ba bilti mamin. Somebody who doesn't have that muna in a kadosh baruch He's giving it so that they should give, they should benefit him. So he should be in good standing amongst his neighbors and amongst his community and his business partners and so on. So his kavanah is not for a mitzvah. Hashem commanded us to do these chukim, these statutes. L'chayeseinu, to give us life. Kayeimazet, meaning l'chayeseinu, means that to benefit Kla Yisrael. In this world, in the next world. Ta'ikiratin Hashem ba'a mitzvah, k'day she'yitiv lanu l'chayeseinu. That's what Hashem wants, that's why he gave us the mitzvahs. P'shemachi gamzehu mitzvah. So then that's also a mitzvah, to bring that about. So therefore, a person uh, who is giving tzedakah, even though he's giving it Eloi uh, Nishmas, or he's giving it the Schos of Fuah Shalema, and these, this is also the Ratan Hashem that our Fuah Shalema should come about. Of, of, uh, uh, and, they, uh, and there should be some Hatzlocha, right, for the, uh, of this person who's, who is a Maimon by Kodesh Baruch Hu, and therefore that itself is also a merit. So we're not saying that that's necessarily the Lishma, the highest level of Tadaka, but that's also good. And therefore we have both reasons, the reason of Rashi, that of course even if he wouldn't get what he wants, he would still be a merit, he would still want to give the Tadaka. And also this side Kavana that he's giving as well is something that Agadosh Baruch Hu wants. Now, <coughs> this, okay, that was the long piece that we had today.
Because in Mishmas, you never know exactly what happens. There you get the physical you can see the result. Right. Either you know, or, you don't see it. But there also, it seems like there's not really a question that the Neshama will have an Eloi through somebody giving tzedakah and that was generated through somehow in their remembrance. That they they had a, a, a hand in that giving of the tzedakah, right? Whether it's their own uh, son or grandson and so on, or it's just somebody in the community who was inspired through their uh, through their memory. Okay. Um, okay. If we turn to the next the, the, the other side, okay, this was magnified, so it's really not as long as it looks. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll see how many of these we have time for. But this is one on the right hand side. Okay, this is something that uh, can be taken the wrong way, but we're going to take it and we'll hopefully have the Seichel to apply it in the correct way. The idea here is that we should give tzedakah with a kavay to the one who's a recipient. To, with respect to the one who's receiving, we should give it in a respectful way towards that person. When you fulfill a mitzvah, with this ani, you are fulfilling a mitzvah. Mitzvah tzedakah. Kama mitzvah sasei. Kamai vechzakta by helping another, uh, fortifying another yid, strengthening him. And there's more than one mitzvah that you're performing when you give tzedakah. So this poor man, he's like your esrog. He's like your chetzah shel mitzvah. When you take that esrog to do the mitzvah with, the avagav the esrog, achar mitzvah in b'shom kedusha. An esrog when you're done with the mitzvah has no sanctity to it. Nikol makam beis kiyuma mitzvah. At the time that you are doing the mitzvah with this esrog. This has sanctity as the Kedusha of the Mitzvah is rests and dwells within with this Esrei. Wow, at that time, the Esrei, you can't benefit from it. You can't use it for a mundane purpose. Similarly, we find by also on Sukkot, by the Schach of the Sukkah, that it says in the Gemara that the Schach of the Sukkah has the Shem Shemayim, has the Shechina resting. It's a Chetosh it's a mitzvah. You're doing a mitzvah with this. And you can't just take the Schach and use it <coughs> for some other uh, mundane purpose. Hang your laundry on, so on. Or to take it down and to use it for something other than the Sukkah. And then put it back when you want to sit in the sukkah. No, you can't do that. Chal Shem Shemayim. The name of Hashem, uh, 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 the Shem Shemayim, the Shem Hashem, is Chal on the sukkah. Nasirim Ba'no. It's forbidden to benefit, mundane benefit. So now comes to us. The, your Ani, Mr. Ani here, that you're giving, you're fulfilling all these mitzvahs with, he's like your Esraik. Nechein Asr Linag by Minig Bizayat. Think, uh, uh, think about the ani as if the shem shemayim, the kedusha of the mitzvah, is chal on this ani. You're not giving to plain stam, uh, to, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry for any, any regular guy. This guy has kedusha on mitzvah, chal on him. It's the shem shemayim that is rests on this person that you're being mekayim a mitzvah through him. Do we check them out as thoroughly as we check out our Esri before we buy it? <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want an ugly one, you want a beautiful one. It's not funny there, people look at the hydrate idea. Okay. Um, yes. I don't know, but there are organizations that claim that they uh, screen all of the recipients and that you can rely on that. Lechain Asr Linuk by Minuk Bizayan. You can't treat uh, an ani with a minig bizayan with degradation. The Gemara did Ashina Meshabbos in Gemara and Shabbos the, the, we dash in the Pasuk uh, there's a mitzvah that a person does with dirt. 
kind of cover do you have for dirt? You do the mitzvah of Kisle Adam. Mikra, the, the Pasuk says, Gabi Kisle Adam. Bima Sheshavach Yechasa. So the Gemara Tarshans, Shalla Yechasenu Beregel. You shouldn't use your foot to kick the dirt onto it. Shalla Yehu Mitzvah is Bezuya Yisalav. The Mitzvah shouldn't be Bozoi. Shouldn't be uh, disrespectful in your eyes. So you do a Mitzvah, you do it with respect. Kena Ani Mamish. And this is no joke. It's an Isra Daraisa, he says. Maybe he means the Isra Daraisa that the Gemara Darshan by Kiso Adam. Or maybe he means other Isurin. But what I mean to say that we should have the Seichal to take this the right way is that first and foremost, this person is a person. He's a human being. And there's Kavod Abriya is involved. And that goes without saying that extra inspiration that we have here is that it's not just a regular person. He's a, this person has a kedusha of a mitzvah that's chal on him that's an extra. But don't start taking this and saying that uh, treating him like, a, like your esrog, you know, and make him feel like you don't care about him and you're just here, you go to somebody and he knows that you don't really care about him and you're not really interested in him. You just want to keep a mitzvah of, uh, of uh, you know, of Bikr Chaylin. Don't do that. The first and foremost is that there's a human being here. But uh, this is an extra added that this is not just any plain human being here. This is somebody that has the kedusha of the mitzvah, that chal that rests upon them at the time uh, that you're doing the mitzvah. Okay. Again, I have the more, same we have time again. for another. If you know that they're bogus. Okay, we're talking. We're no, we're talking about somebody who really, uh, really, is a, there's a kiyum mitzvah here. Okay, there really is a kiyum mitzvah. But even, but even that is, you know, even some is bogus. There, there, are, there are various ways of not giving. Okay, you can just not give, or you can make, make it, make it, make the person who ever designed the numbers. Um, well, what's the Like better, just, just totally mistreat him as opposed to just let's say ignore him. I mean, that, you know. <coughs> okay, the Pasuk says, V'yikku li truma. V'yikku is interesting, Lasha, and we spoke about this before, it's mentioned, V'yikku li truma. Yikku means to take. Okay, now, they shall take, it's, it really seems like it means they shall give, because this wasn't a mandatory giving. So there was nobody going around uh, telling people, uh, taking from people. It was uh, actually whoever wanted would give. So what is this, Lasha, and V'yikku li truma? Right? It doesn't say, speak to the Bnei Yisrael, speak to like certain appointed people. Speak to all the Bnei Yisrael. So everyone is giving is the Yitchuli. They're the ones who are taking. So, says the Beis Levi, it doesn't say to give, it says to take. The main acquisitions that a person has, the real the real bank account that he has is what he gave to tzedakah. Every time a person gives tzedakah, he's giving it, he's putting the money that was potentially his, and now he is acquiring it. He's giving it to tzedakah, now it's his, eternally. The person has a lot of money. It's not his money. When Hashem gives a person possessions in this world, it's not really belonging to the person. I got his Baruch Hu is giving a person Something in this world that he is like a gizbar. He's like somebody, Hashem says, you're in charge. You're like, you're in charge of my account. Here's my account. You take care of it. You use it. Hopefully you're going to use it well. But that's what a person, that's his relationship to the money that a person has. The money is resting by him. It's placed by him. A big, very interesting example. A big chunk of sugar. Hamunach ba'argas. It's in a, a sagor, in a closed box. Okay, you picture the sugar, a lot of sugar, in a box. There's vuv echad, and then there's one fly. The fly likes sugar. The fly is stuck in the box. Gam kein b'teva. And the fly, so the fly is here, and the sugar is here, in the same box. B'teva ha'yelich alav. He's resting, he's, he's going on the sugar he's eating he's taking whatever he wants is this his sugar he's a rich he's a rich he can't go anywhere he also is locked in this box 
the gandim the kaiyeh lidla ikula lasma. He can't take all of it for himself. So that's the person's money. He's next to the money. Okay, he's in the same box as the money. That's how we should view view it. Kena shira segabe yadam to rak munach etzlan. It's the money that's put by him. Pleshem shaloi. What a person gives, the exact amount that he gives, that's what is, is his. It's an unbelievable quote from the Gemara in Baba Basra. By Munbaz HaMelech. Munbaz HaMelech. He gave from his royal Eitzrais, uh, uh, from, from his treasuries to Tzedakah. And he gave very generously. And he said, Do you think I'm wasting my money? My, my forefathers, they put it into the coffers, they put it, they stored it away for others that would get it, you know, the, in, in future generations. Remember these words. Munba said, I stored it away for myself. That's what his, his attitude was towards giving to Tzedakah. If you had so use it for goodness. Use it to, to be made to yourself. So Pashup Shat in the Gemara, it sounds like it's saying that enjoy your money. Don't save it. What are you saving up for? You don't know when, when you're going to be nifter. You don't know when the people come after you, if they're going to be righteous, how they're going to use it. What are you saving it for? If you have something, to, something that you, you feel is worthwhile with this money, you want to enjoy, enjoy the money. So the Basil Levy says, but it means something else. It means... The, that get, it means that you should do something that will ultimately benefit you, not just temporarily benefit yourself, but benefit yourself forever. That's what's benefiting a person. So that's why the Pasuk says in Parashat Truma, the Yichuli Truma, because you're really taking the Truma, you're taking it, whatever you're giving to Tzedakah, you're taking for yourself. Only that, who shall I? Only that is really his. Okay, and um, okay. So we. Um, I'm not going to read the next part, but I have. Uh, on the, we have two more minutes, so I'm going to speak out the idea. The true, the the idea is like this. This says by the our own that they kept the luchais in it, that it was made out of wood, and there was a covering of gold on the outside. And there was a covering of gold in the inside. So the inside was the luchais. So the house for the luchais was this wood covered with gold, covered with um, inside gold and outside gold. person sometimes gives to a tamu chacham. And he gives, and he says, he's giving gold. And he says, I'll give to the tamu chacham that he should have food for him for his family that he should have in the inside that he should be taken care of that he shouldn't go hungry and that's what he's giving but he says we have to realize that it's important that the Tamir Chachamim there should be gold on the outside as well that they should look they should be respected in the community that the Tamil Chacham should go and yes it's true he has food and to eat in his family but look at his kids Look at his, uh, his, 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 the way that he goes. Is it, it's a muster to a tamu chacham that has to be presented with gold on the outside. But that those who give, they shouldn't say it's just enough that, uh, that um, me bias. It should be me bias um from the inside and from the outside. That they should also be noyem bene abriya is belavusham abedirasam v'chol yaneyam that people who are concerned and Baruch Hashem there's so much Achzakas Torah and Klai Yisrael that we're very fortunate and that there is such it goes not just to um, provide for um, that which isn't seen that uh, they should have food on their table but that also they should have some degree of, uh, of respect uh, and standing that they should that it should be Mechubed Be'enei Abriyais Hashakach Many lessons in Tadaka from this week's Parsha, Parsha Stuma.